This article is courtesy of VOANews.com. Heading, fighting in Yemen's Marib kills 90 in 24 hours, government military sources say. Fierce fighting between Yemeni pro-government forces and Iran-backed Houthi rebels has killed at least 90 combatants on both sides in the past 24 hours, government military sources said Saturday. The Shiite rebels launched an offensive last month to seize Marib, the last stronghold in northern Yemen of pro-government forces who are backed by a Saudi-led military coalition. The clashes in the oil-rich province left 32 dead among government forces and loyalist tribes, while 58 Houthi rebels were killed in coalition airstrikes, the sources told AFP. They said heavy battles broke out on six fronts as government forces were able to counter attacks by the Houthis, who managed to advance only on the Kassara front northwest of Marib city. The fighting also left dozens of people wounded, the sources added. The loss of Marib would be a huge blow for the Yemeni government, but also would threaten catastrophe for civilians, including hundreds of thousands of displaced people sheltering in desolate camps in the surrounding desert. Additionally, it would be a major setback for Saudi Arabia, which has been the target of increasingly frequent Houthi missiles attacks in recent weeks. Shrapnel from Houthi drones intercepted Friday by the Houthis wounded two civilians, including a 10 year old in the southwest of the kingdom. The official SPA news agency reported U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken urged the Houthis on Monday to halt their offensive in Marib as he announced 191 million in aid at a donors conference. Aid alone will not end the conflict. We can only end the humanitarian crisis in Yemen by ending the war. So the United States is reinvigorating our diplomatic efforts to end the war, he said. The United States had sought to raise 3.85 billion from more than 100 governments and donors, but only 1.7 billion was raised. That's the end of that article. I'll leave the link in the description box if you want to read it yourself or share it. But I want to give you guys an in-depth vision, idea of the type of fighting that is going on in Yemen, inside of oil-rich, gas-rich Marib. That is the last stronghold for the Yemeni government backed by Saudi Arabia. Okay, so Saudi Arabia has called in airstrikes. It is a bloodbath. They're calling it a bloodbath. 90 people died. 90 fighters on both sides. On the Yemeni government side and the Houthi rebel side. Okay. This is courtesy of Arab News. Heading Houthis take 500 families hostage in Marib battle. So while they're battling, there's camps set out for displaced people. So while there's a firefight between the Yemeni government and the Houthi rebels, the Houthi rebels, because they're being attacked from the sky, they took refuge in these camps and took 500 families hostage. Now, I understand that people would say that's horrible, that's wrong, but this is the type of warfare that is going on in Yemen. This is why I say if I were the president of the United States, I would not send in any military personnel and America hasn't and I don't blame them. I don't think the Marines, hell, even snipers, because the Houthi rebels have snipers also. 
They're calling this a blood bath. Now, the Houthi rebels are 50 miles from Merib City. They're marching into Merib City to take out the Yemeni government backed by Saudi Arabia and seize the oil fields and the gas fields. They're 50 miles away from Merib City. So let's say they were not fighting and they were in a car driving from their destination now to Merib City. It's 50 miles away. They're literally an hour away in a vehicle from entering Merib City where they want to take out the Yemeni government backed by Saudi Arabia and seize the oil fields and the gas fields. Now, the United States Secretary of State came out and said, well, we want to give the Houthi rebels 100 plus million dollars to stop fighting. Houthi rebels will not take that money because they're fighting for something greater. You can't buy them. This is why every time whatever president, whether it's Donald Trump, whether it's Joe Biden, whether it's Barack Hussein Obama, they can't negotiate with the Houthi rebels. The Houthi rebels don't want to negotiate. They don't want foreign intervention. Now, there's reports of Houthi rebels attacking Saudi Arabia's oil industry over the last week or so. You had a Houthi rebels rocket shot down in the sky in Saudi Arabia by Saudi Arabia. In 24 hours, you have 90 fighters dying, dead. You have Saudi Arabia cheating, cheating, cheating. And they're still getting their asses whipped, cheating, sending in airstrikes. And the Houthi rebels are still advancing. It's all out war. All out war. Every night it's war. Every day it's war. Non-stop. Non-stop. Four days ago, you had CNN. Reporting on the Houthis saying that Houthis say they've seized majority control of key city in Yemen. That was four days ago. Okay. Reuters. Two weeks ago, Yemen's Houthis raised stakes in Merib. Bloodbath sources say. So even the American media is acknowledging that the Houthi rebels are in fact advancing even though Saudi Arabia is sending in airstrikes. Now check this out. I want you guys to pay attention to this heading. This was from July of last year by Middle East Monitor. Heading, why have the Houthis failed to seize Yemen's Merib province? Just last year, they were talking about why the Houthis could not seize Merib. Fast forward to today, Merib is under a major threat by the Houthi rebels that are marching day and night to take out the Yemeni government that's backed by Saudi Arabia. You had Joe Biden come out and say, well, We'll stop supplying Saudi Arabia. And it's like, well, how about you just stop doing it? 
Now they're trying to come to the table with a hundred plus million. Listen, the Houthis don't want that. They do not want foreign intervention. They want Saudi Arabia and America out of their affairs by any means necessary. By any means necessary. The price of war. There's no place safe for refugees. And this gives Americans an in-depth look on why we have an immigration problem globally. Because when war breaks out, people flee into other borders. It is what it is. When countries collapse, they're going to go to the city, they're going to the state, the country, wherever they can go, where there's plentiful jobs, money. Why do you think America is a major destination for many foreigners? In this case here, you have refugees inside of Yemen camps, desolate camps. And now those camps are being threatened because it's an all out war for Merrick. And if the, or should I say, when the Houthi rebels take Merrick, there will be hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of casualties on the Houthi rebel side. I'm not denying that. There, there will be casualties, but they will seize the city. And when they do, that will be another international embarrassment for Saudi Arabia, which is a world power, but can't beat a rebel group. Even though they're sending in air strikes. A lot of this fighting is happening in the desert the wide open desert the wide open desert very few boulders where they could hide and duck from gunshots hide from gunshots try to camouflage no this is wide open desert majority of this fighting then you have the other half where they're fighting in hills, mountains. They're setting booby traps. They even have teenagers, the Houthi rebels, even teenagers are out there fighting. If you can hold a gun, if you know the Quran, you out there fighting. 14 years old, 15 years old. Those are the main ones that's dying. That age group. I have video. I have video in my possession. Where I'm able to see a lot of what's going on in America. And from what I have viewed. A lot of the casualties that are happening on the Houthi sides are in fact. Teens. 16, 17, 15 out there fighting. So unfortunately, if America and Saudi Arabia really wanted to put an end to the war in Yemen, they would withdraw their government. The Houthi rebels do not want foreign intervention. Not at all. And if the talks don't start with that, you're wasting your time. If the talks don't start with Saudi Arabia pulling their government and stop supplying weapons to the Yemeni government, those talks won't take place. Here's another article by PRI.org two weeks ago. Yemen's most stable city threatened by Houthi takeover. 
So Merib is Yemen's most stable city. The most stable city in Yemen. And it is now under a major threat. And this goes to show you that you can't buy people. Merib is a thriving city via Saudi Arabia, right? You can go and get a job, make some money, live a decent life. You own a shop, you work, you know, you can make a few bucks. It's a thriving economy, right? And many people will say, well, why would you want to destroy something like that? Why would you want to take out the government? People are living, people are this, people are that. But my question to you is, would you sell out for a thriving country or would you want to do it yourself and pass it down through generation and generation without having other countries come in and tell you how to live, manipulate your resources? It may be a thriving city, but you're not getting anything out of it but a job. Many of the people there aren't making millions of bucks. It's a foreign system. It's a foreign system. And because a system is working financially, doesn't mean it's right. And that is one of the messages the Houthi rebels have gotten across. Like, listen, just because it's a, a stable city doesn't mean it has the right to be under the rule of foreign powers like Saudi Arabia. If it's going to be a stable city, it's going to be a stable city under Houthi rule. Stay tuned.